godlike. But, yeah, but he's playing Ike now. <laughs> puts the Ike in godlike. True. Uh, but now Westchester, I mean, you, you got. Play, we have a player that won a major from yeah. Westchester now. Like uh, it, you've it, got it, arguably the best Yoshi in North America, Miles. Uh, from best Westchester Pokemon trainer well. in the world, mm -hmm. arguably. Yeah, as well as Noku, who's also helped innovate yeah. the meta. Bobo, um, as well, who's probably one of the best snakes. Um, here in Tri-State. The list that goes on said, and on. Yeah, but uh, neither of these players from uh, Westchester. Nope. We've got Steelix. Where's and now Silver from? Do I, you don't, know? I don't know. Steelix from the city now, formerly from Connecticut. Uh, yep. And, you know, not as active Hyper in the grind Zeus. until recently. And, you know, now that he's kind of started grinding and we've seen him take some results off yeah. of, you know, take, take some wins on most of New York's top players. Been going around fooling around with the dock a lot as of late, but been going mostly Falco in yeah. this bracket to fantastic results. I think Steelix is honestly like New York PR level. Yeah, no, he's to be honest. It's just activity mm -hmm. and the attendance and wins were never mm -hmm. consistent enough. But and Steelix is definitely up there. I mean yeah. we've seen Steelix make like Steelix has definitely just barely missed the cut for getting banned from this Arcadian. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. I mean, he was literally, he had to, he was telling me before, he had to convince Helper to let him enter. And <laughs> the way things are going right now, I mean, he is literally two I'm regretting wins, that decision. Yeah, he's two <laughs> wins away from, well, never being allowed to enter another one. So, you take those, right, if you're Steelix. That being said, it can be so difficult for Falco to find consistent ways in on Aegis because of just how large those disjoints are. That being said, I think Steelix's playstyle lends itself really well. He uses laser from range very, very well, as well as his kind of favoritism towards Illusion as a grounded burst option, more so than you'll see other Falcos do, even after the buff. Make, kind of gives that mid-range predict unpredictability that you really need against a character like Aegis. Yeah, and I also just think Steelix's mm -hmm. patience goes a long way with that as well. I do want to note Mouse Silver's patience, though. Like, yes. I've never heard of them before, never seen them before, but they are incredibly patient. They absolutely dismantled their last opponent in June in Winter Semis, mm -hmm. and now we're seeing them go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Steelix right now, who is a very patient player in his own right, too. You know, with, with Pyra Mithra, the frame data is there, but you have to be real. Like, this is not a gimme DLC character. You have to have a, some sense of fundamentals, and especially how to manage your disadvantage if you want to succeed with this character. Yeah, ab especially at the higher levels. I think definitely at, like, low and mid-level play, you can just kind of... You can roll your face buttons. on the controller with yeah, Mithra and you exactly. Win. And Pyra, too. Like, yeah. the, that, that Smash covers half the stage for a reason. Everyone, uh, please stop complaining about Pithra when you're complaining about Fighter's Pass, too. I agree. This <laughs> character This character's just got... This character's got a lot, but also, like, in terms of, you know, has some very defined counterplay. A still a very honest character in some ways, yeah. as weird as that is to say. Falco, though, not looking honest at all right there. That down tilt up air closing it out. Steelix find, trying to find a way to extend this lead, looking to put you in the blender, but great job by Mouse Silver utilizing that fastball capability, getting out after only 50%, and <gasps> maybe going to find the stock here? I don't know if anything could have punished that. I don't know how negative that side B is on shield. I know it's bad, but I don't know if up smash would have taken I don't the think up right smash would have, but you might have just been able Maybe to get a up smash. Yeah, or That's just up grab and too. throw them off stage, right? Force the linear recovery to have to deal with. I mean, Pyra aerials. All right, big F smash still. That sword ain't as strong as Pyra's, but excellent. The space forward air right there to take that stock. And this is looking pretty good for Mouse Silver. We're now out of the percentage where Falco will get the crazy pillar combo and for free. Oh Ooh. my god, I love so much worse. I loved the I love the F Smash attempt there. Like you see what they're going for, trying to get the two frame out ledge. That being said, there were Ooh, opportunities for something this else. Could be stuck. Yeah, this No this jump is, no, left. No, oh! oh no! <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I was gonna say yeah. like it, it was like, there was just nothing like when you get caught off stage without you, a character like Falco. Yep. You might have been able to maybe, like, try and find a sneak a laser or two somewhere in there, force them to kind of at least renege on their positioning a little right. bit, or catch the jump out to find a route back. But because you only have that illusion and Firebird that are, well, very linear, right? You have to find ways to mix up your pressure. I think. What a comeback. I, I think instead of that illusion, you could have. Fired some lasers and then tried to find the non two frameable angle. Yeah, that you can also you go have pretty low with it. Like Falco's up B doesn't go that far, but it, you can go decently yeah. high vertically with it. Uh, that was definitely an oh shit, I'm in disadvantage. I'm about to die. Let me just decide. I need to get back to stage right now. And against Pyramithra, 
you cannot recover above the ledge safely. It just doesn't work. Like, this character will go out and fare you every time. Yeah. And, I mean, the downside is, well, she can't really recover yeah, against you either exactly. most of the time. I love the mix-ups that we're seeing from Mouselver when these side specials come out. Out, right? In, in that we're just seeing the height mix-up really trying to mix whether I'm going to use it just to try and snap the ledge, whether I'm going to use it as a hitbox to throw out, and really keep still it's guessing so you can't just line up those downers, line up those lasers to really just prolong Mithra's disadvantage state. Okay, though, yeah, big, big runoff fair right there coming out. Mao just trying to find solid ground, but it's not going to work out. Steelix, though, again, keeping this healthy mid-range. It's it's just about, you know, Falco can put Aegis in the blender, but Aegis can also put Falco in the blender. Like, this is such a volatile matchup. And the, did you see that wave bounce on that the up good. special there? That just to good. create a little bit extra space. Give yourself that extra Ooh, room. Oh, oh no, the illusion, much. but having the double jump, you were able to get back... Buffered roll gonna keep you in the corner just for a moment. I love just the double laser there, just rack on some damage. Still, the Silix not able to get out of this corner and terrified because all it takes is one aerial and that's your stop. Now bringing that right back even after a hot start from Steelix. And if you're Steelix, you have to, I think you have to take this game. I think you have to take yeah, this game if you want to win this set. That's true. I, I think also just when you're on ledge against Aegis, you cannot be the first. Like, I know it, being on ledge is a game of chicken. You cannot be the first one pulling the trigger, though, especially not with that option that Steelix just chose. Falco definitely can serve up a little bit more ambiguity. Like, you can do a fucking wall jump off the ledge or something like that to get back on. So, I, th I just think that Steelix is getting caught out because it's, there's just so many options above the ledge that can be covered. You just gotta wait for Mao to swing first in that situation, I feel Speaking like. Speaking of swinging first, beautiful down tilt there. I've loved Mao's kind of use of the down tilt, especially with Pyra throughout this set. You see it from time to time because it does combo into that up air, air. However, you don't really see people catch approaches with it nearly as much as Mao has been, and I think it's been working wonders for them oh, yeah. so far. Seen Mao in a similar situation as well. Last game, you know, we're gonna see if Steelix can close it out or if Mao can pull another crazy clutch moment. Yeah, okay. I think I think honestly staying on the pirate here is, is kind good. of like yeah. it's good, but I think it's also a trap you fall into where people often think of, okay, but Mithra is the damage character, Pyra is the kill character, and once I get to a certain percent, I'm just staying Pyra. Whereas the key to this character, I think, at the higher levels is how fluidly can you switch able to still lock it down, right, because, again, right, now corner pressure and just ability to ledge trap consistently has been so good yeah. that it doesn't matter, but we're not really seeing the fluidity of the switches that you might want to see out of, of top level he just play. I think... I think Mao definitely has a, mm -hmm. a very simplistic method to why yeah. we're switching. With with Pyra, when you get your opponent at like kill percent, your win condition becomes so much more clear cut. Oh, are you kidding me? That was a multi hit moment. Yeah, definitely multi. Uh, actually, it's PMLG. <laughs> it's it's Aegis PMLG guys. Uh, <laughs> clearly ban Aegis. Clearly. Uh, no. In all seriousness, I'm though. Down. <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, though, absolutely. Like that was just fade back rising aerial on a multi hit and Aegis was already Goofy, at the very end of it. You're both drifting away from each other, you know, parting of the seas, not a whole lot of hits done. It, exactly. makes, it makes sense, but, like, just Steelix's oh. ability to constantly, like, you see He's every Falcon in the world, right, hit these up tilt back airs, yeah. up tilt up airs, but the way Steelix mixes in slingshots, mixes his drift, means that he's often looking for that back air regardless of how you DI, but you never know whether he's just going to go for it, whether he's going to maybe mix in the up air, which he does less than most other Falcos, or go for the slingshot. And it Ooh. just his ability to keep you guessing is absurd. Down to, down to a dash attack. I'm writing that one down. <laughs> it's just free pressure. <laughs> All right, the Mao. No, finding openings here or there, it's just Felix's ability to close out stocks is ridiculous. And against Falco, you have to really keep your cool because you are going to get hit. You are going to get trapped in a combo for longer than you want to be. It's not like a lot of characters in this game where you take your 30 in and you walk it off. It's You're going to be stuck there for a while, and you're going to be in hit stun for a while. Absolutely. And, and, you know, one of the things that I think Mao's done a really good job about is taking away some of Steelix's yeah, ability to I close agree. out stocks. Uh, Steelix isn't just a converter. He's also fantastic at finding up smash reads. It's, it's, and just, like, hitting, right, like, just getting a lock on you, and then just getting just a raw call out to close out a stock at a percent. He really should not get it. But Mao's patience is just not letting yeah. him 
have any of those so far, and it's really been a difference maker so far early on. It's been really good. This Pyro has been putting in a lot of mm. legwork. It, it's just whittling away. All right, that's that's. I I, res I respect it. I don't agree with I it, but respect I respect it. it. I, I think that was just way too. Let me do something crazy, wacky, silly, since mm -hmm. I've played too many neutral interactions yeah. at this point. And try and get a funky out of shield you option. You gotta keep not your cool. You can't you can't be mashing out I here, think especially it, on kill percent. Like, it, you can take those risks early stock, but not late stock. You I can't would do that. I would like it more if it wasn't under the center. Yeah, platform. exactly. If it wasn't <laughs> if it wasn't like okay, they literally have the opportunity to di in such a way that they actually can just tech out of the middle of this, even if it does connect. But this is an opportunity now, right? Both players just dead even, scrapping back and forth. Steelix loves these up-angled F-tilts at low percent to tr just... They're good poke put you in, Yeah, but also, poke. No, it puts you in a tech chase situation where you can kind of follow up with with a dash attack. We, we can, you can follow up with a laser, which is what we've seen Steelix do so far. But also, if once you get them kind of expecting that, they might try and, and dash, j dash back and then jump in afterwards, and then you can really start to catch those and find a lot of free punishes. Ooh, my Ooh. god, that could have been such an insane combo but, right and there. And there's the F smash, right? Coming yeah. out, he's starting to find, look for opportunities for oh, those no. beats. We lost the jump. Yeah, it's Falco laser hit stun, man. It, it's crazy no yeah, matter what game real. it's in. Ma Mouse Silver is definitely getting one laser closer and closer to having a Joker moment, for sure. Oh, all it takes is one bad day, right? <laughs> exactly, literally. This is really scary. Yep, great. Usage of Falco's jump height to just set up that dare perfectly. And that'll right him so smart too, because if it hits right, it extends your combo. And then when it misses, like we just saw, it just resets you back to neutral. Even a character as fast as Aegis doesn't get to. And then down, the air dodge there to kind of call out saying, hey, you can't get away with a down air on me here. Just Steelix is playing on point defensively here. It really feels like he's got a little bit of a download here in this game number three. For real. These laser mix-ups too are making Ma Mao's already simplistic movement a lot more boiled down. Mm -hmm. Mao is not allowed to breathe whatsoever. That's going to be the stock right there. And yeah, Steelix I, that making up to game four. I love that reflector so much. Like I hate it. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm saying like love, from, I, from Steelix. Yeah, like, that was good. That because was really it was good. just like, it was just... The intention there is for it to be pressure. It's like you can get illusion sh or you can get laser shore, but that the, the reflector is going to hit them further away from you, which even though it's not going to kill at that percent, you don't really care because they don't have a chance. And so, yeah. so you, with laser, it's just going to kind of stall them and they're going to fall a little bit, but they might still be able to get backwards. This reflector, if that hits, it's over. And if it doesn't hit, well, they're already too far away. I think, yeah, I agree with that completely. I think Mao also has fallen into the pitfall of playing how you should play. A lot, a lot of basically what I mean by that is a lot of mid-level players, when they start to get pretty good, they will become consistent because they won't take a lot of risks a lot of the time. They will keep their gameplay very safe, very inoffensive. Oh my god! You oh my god! We we need to see Mao turn up. We need to see the turn up occur because yeah. you are playing how you would play against another mm -hmm. mid-level player very well. Yeah. Steelix is Steelix's playstyle is so different from most Falcos. It's he, the it's the It's like an annoying fly in your face constantly. You think you can press start pressing a button, you're getting a laser tacked on. You wanna I, jump in, you're getting shine. Mm -hmm. You think you can land on me, you're getting up tilted in, and you think you can get out my combo? Nope, I've got an extension. Yeah. Th this summer light actually shared with me kind of joking of uh, three tiers of, of player, right? There's mashers, there's thinkers, and then there's thinkers that are also that know when to mash. Yeah. And he's like, thinkers yeah. that know he's when like, to mash he's like, like low-level players are mashers, mid-level players are thinkers. Yeah. And then when you really get the next factors, you know when to just start pushing buttons, right? Start to just uh, go for the weird janky stuff that's not quite in a flow chart, but sometimes it just works. And we're seeing Steelix really do it so far, whereas Mao, as you mentioned, is kind of getting a little bit stuck in that flowchart type of gameplay. It's 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 mastering the fundamentals to a point where you know what will happen. You know the consequences of your next button. Where most players will mash, don't think about the consequences of their mashing. But when you're good and you know what happens when you you know that you can play patiently, you also know when you can turn up and do these wacky kooky options like up smash randomly in the middle of a new track. Yeah, that being no said, it didn't still didn't work because it clanked and Falco was able to just find the punish on, on the clank lag. That was it's just such a wonky interaction, yeah. especially because <laughs> only one of these characters has a disjoint, and it's it's not Falco. <laughs> that being said, though, Mao knocking on death's door here. 
Surely we see a switch to, to Pyro or something at this point to polish off this stock. I think you don't actually now that it's 184 there because go, that yeah, up yeah. smash kills, that F smash kills. You're kind of at a point where once you get past a certain percent range, why even, like honestly, most of the time, why even switch to Pyra? Because yeah, most of her Ooh, moves okay, kill, but go. also you have so many options with Mithra and she's just so much faster that you don't really need it. Exactly. And uh, I was going to say, I thought Mao's Pyro was looking really good. Mm -hmm. Now we're finally starting to see the Mithra do something like exceptional. Yeah. Of That'd course, be... now we switch back to Pyra mm -hmm. at Ste the worst time possible. Steelix has done a fantastic job. And I mean, closing out the set, first of all, but also just did a, did a fantastic oh, job calling out saying, okay, you're switching, like understanding that, hey, this is a very simplistic approach to these switches coming out, out from Mal. Mm -hmm. And so saying, okay, I'm going to just breathe. I'm going to let you switch. I'm not going to necessarily try and call you out, out your punish on the end lag, but I'm going to try and punish the first button you press after that. Right. Because once you're swapped over to Pyra especially, if I can get this hit, I just get so much off this exactly. reversal. And he, like really capitalized as the set went on, on punishing, in especially Mithra, Mithra moments where Mao's Mithra was, or Pyra was insane, but as soon as they got put in disadvantage, there was just death exactly. because you're able to call out once again. Like there at the end, we saw the illusion or the the side special get called out because the switch had to come right before. Which if it, there had been a, you've been able to let them swap back over to Mithra first, you wouldn't have gotten. So it was just, I don't it just even gorgeous know if it stuff. Needed to happen then either. I feel like the switch timing mm -hmm. was just inopportune. Like yeah. you're you're still above ledge, you're off stage. Mm -hmm. You're doing the equivalent of an air dodge well, in the air, basically.